Um, welcome to the Gold Room Podcast with your hosts, Sophia Garcia and Tasca Narisha. Tune in as we interview those affected by childhood cancer, gather, gather their perspectives, and help others find comfort in their expertise. Today, we'll be interviewing Elizabeth from the organization Princess Against Cancer. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Go Room Podcast. We're your hosts, Sophia Garcia and Tasty Narisha. And joining us today, we have Elizabeth from the Princess Against Cancer Organization. Thank Hi. you so much for taking the time to join us on our podcast. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited. Okay, so just to start off, um, just introduce yourself. Like, could you tell us a little bit about your organization and its goal? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Elizabeth, and I am the founder and co-president of Princesses Against Cancer which is a 501c3 nonprofit that surprises children battling all different types of illnesses, including cancer, with their favorite characters. Um, We do hospital visits, virtual visits. Sometimes we put together surprise parties for them and that kind of stuff. That sounds really cool. How did this organization come to be? Um, So originally it started off as just a group of my friends and I that noticed a problem or a need that wasn't being met and we just decided that we were going to be the ones to solve it and since then it's definitely grown. Is there a specific story that inspired your creation? Um, So how all of this kind of happened is a long time ago I used to work as a party princess. So basically families would hire the company that I worked for and they would have princesses for children's birthdays. And on a particular day, I got asked to do a birthday party at a hospital. And I guess at the time it didn't register in my brain that it could be for a patient. I just thought maybe it was for a nurse or a doctor or something. And when I arrived, um, a mother and her three-year-old daughter who was battling cancer were the ones that greeted me. And again, I just didn't think that the company that I worked for charged them. So I just went on with the party like any other party. And as the party progressed and I talked to the family more, the mom told me that they had put other aspects of their life on pause and saved up money so that they could do this for their daughter because they didn't think that she would make it till her birthday. And that just broke my heart and filled me with so much passion and rage, I guess, that I decided to start my own organization that did this for families at no cost. That sounds really incredible. So is there like any other story like that um, that you would like to share when a child has expressed gratitude for being able to experience the opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. I would have to say that this is one of the most rewarding things that anyone can do because what we always hear from parents is, you know, I haven't seen my child smile this big, or I haven't seen my child this excited about anything in a long time. But a story that comes to mind is before the pandemic, a family reached out to us to help us plan a birthday party for their twin daughters, one who was battling cancer at the time. And it was something that we had never done before, but I was really excited about the idea. So I asked the mom to get me a list of the top things that were like their wish for a dream birthday party. And on this list were bounce houses, unicorns, and all of the princesses. And I can say confidently that we did all three of those things, including the unicorn. And the look on those little girls' faces when they opened the door to their backyard and they saw eight princesses standing outside, a unicorn and bounce houses was just the most rewarding experience ever. And it's definitely something that we want to start doing again once the pandemic gets better because it was just magical. So what are some challenges that you face while making this organization and still managing it? Um, Being so young, since I was 16 and I didn't have any background or knowledge of nonprofits, it was really difficult to know what the next step was. I had this idea and it seemed like no one in my life had the knowledge or the background to point me in the right direction. So initially it was a lot of just going with the flow, trial and error, learning from my mistakes and just hoping for the best, I guess. So did you have any like 
uh, support from any adults like that held similar initiatives? Because I know this is like a very unique thing. So uh, was it like kind of hard not having that much guidance, I guess? Um, so I had the support from my parents and, you know, my school administrations and things like that. But initially it felt like we were all kind of in the dark. Nobody really knew what to do next. I have immigrant parents who have no idea like how to start a nonprofit. They were just looking at me like, this is great, honey, but how do you do that? Like, how do you start a nonprofit? So I wasn't able to get us registered as an official nonprofit until I was 18. Um, but I did have a lot of support and I feel like the support from my family and my school and my classmates and stuff really helped, you know, keep pushing me through, I guess, so that I didn't give up and I just kept making this dream a reality. So since you started your organization very young, it seems like there's been a lot of growth like throughout. So how do you think your organization has grown since it's been created? Um, well, I would say we've come a long way since just being a group of a handful of friends. Now we have different locations. Um, we have a very strong chapter in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we still have a really good chapter in West Palm Beach. And we're also partnering with organizations nationwide and worldwide that help us reach more children, whether that's existing princess cosplayers that want to volunteer their time in their area and we're helping get them the resources and contacts that they need to do that. Um, I feel like we went from just visiting one hospital every once in a while to having constant visits weekly, which is amazing. Um, and we've even been able to do international visits, which is something that at 16 years old, I couldn't even fathom the idea of doing something like that. Um, what do you think contributed most to the expansion of the organization? I will be honest. I think that everything has just worked out in the way that it was meant to be. Since I was so young, I, I didn't imagine the potential growth that this had through word of mouth and through other families and just through building bonds and connections with other organizations and families, it's been able to grow. I don't think that it's anything that I did on my own. Um, I think it's the people I've met along the way that have helped me make Princesses Against Cancer what it is today. You mentioned how you started partnering um, with other nonprofit organizations. Is this something that you um, have done since you started the organization? And um, are there other nonprofit organizations that have inspired you um, along the way? Um, so when we first started out, um, we were just doing hospital visits and I didn't really know of anyone doing anything similar. I had never seen anyone in my area or even seen other people doing it, but um, I would say that partnering with other nonprofits that maybe weren't doing the exact same thing, but were working with the families and the children that we wanted to reach was really helpful. Um, Right from the start, we started working with the pediatric oncology support team. We started working with just different organizations that helped connect us with families. And now, even though we do completely different things, someone that really inspires me is Ali, the founder of Glimmer of Hope. I just think that she is such a sweet human being and we always message each other and support each other even though we're doing different things. She helps, um, get dolls that look like um, little girls and little boys battling cancer. And we do princess visits. Um, so it's not always someone that's doing the same thing as you, but just being able to support each other is nice, I guess. <laughs> now, what are your goals for the next year and how do you think you'll be able to achieve them? What do you feel that you have to prioritize and what stands as a barrier for you? I think the pandemic definitely makes it tougher than normal. And I think that the goal is always to reach more families and be able to do more good work, be able to reach more families and children. And I think that in order to achieve that goal, obviously prioritizing fundraising um, 
is really important and also prioritize, you know, marketing ourselves, getting ourselves out there. Um, we don't always post and share all the good things that we're doing. So I think that that's something that we need to get better at and sharing with everyone what we're doing. And I guess our goal, I don't know, we just want to keep making magic and doing what we're doing, continuing our mission, I guess, is our main goal. What are your tips on um, fundraising, especially because there are so many um, organizations out there that do need um, some of the fundraising and they can't get enough attention for it? Absolutely. I think that social media now is really big and it's something that we're trying to learn how to do to help us because it's the easiest way to reach a lot of people at once. Um, so making sure that you're sharing constantly what you're up to, what you're doing, post as if you already have that giant audience that's listening, I think. Um, and another thing is just partner with local businesses in your area, focus on your community first and then expand from there. Um, there's so many local businesses, coffee shops, art classes, dance classes that want to put on fundraisers and help local nonprofits. Um, so I would definitely say to focus on the community that you're in and then expand from there and use social media to your benefit. So your website mentioned how you began funding for the organization at the age of 16. So um, as like a teenager, it just sometimes it seems as though like we can't make that big of an impact because of how young we are. So I guess, what are some specific difficulties that you did face due to being a teenager at the beginning of like creating the organization? I would say being a teenager, sometimes it's difficult to get people to take you serious because a lot of people just think that this is a phase or that's really cute. You want to dress up like princesses, like great. I feel like that was the response that I got, but don't give up, keep pushing. Even if you don't know what the next move is, just keep working at that goal. And eventually people will start catching on that, okay, this girl or this guy is serious. They, they're gonna make this happen. So we're either gonna get on the train and support them or, or not, I guess. Do you think there are like any specific moments um at the or events or something like that that you think made people take you more seriously like when your I guess organization was starting to grow um absolutely um there was a lot of I don't know if they have them everywhere but there was competitions where children would pitch their business idea or philanthropic idea I did a contest called Palm Beach Philanthropy and it basically put me in front of investors and people in my community. And I basically did a business pitch to them. And I guess when you're 16, but you're wearing a fancy dress and heels or you're all dressed up like a professional, I guess people take you seriously. So I just went up there, I told them, this is what I wanna do and this is what I need to do it. And I feel like from that point on, it shifted that I wasn't just a girl that wanted to play dress up with her friends, that this was a real nonprofit organization that wanted to do good work. Uh, you've mentioned the pandemic before within um, some of your responses. How do you think uh, the COVID pandemic has impacted your organization? And how have you changed um, your program and organization to accommodate the pandemic? Yeah, um, initially with the pandemic, uh, what we were hearing from the hospitals that we were working with is that kids and the families were devastated because they were isolated. Children couldn't have both their parents. They were only allowed one person in the room. They weren't allowed to have visitors. They weren't allowed to do the normal activities that they would have. Um, and it was really tough on them. So we came up with a way to do like a monthly activity. So we did like a movie night with princesses and their friends and family could join in on the Zoom. It was a big party and they got to meet the princesses before and then watch a movie with their friends and family. And that was a really big success. So from there, we started doing individual virtual celebrations through the hospital. So they would contact us and say, so-and-so is having an end of treatment party. Do you think that you guys could hop on a FaceTime or a Zoom call and just 
be there for that moment since their family can't be there. And then little by little, I guess it just started spiraling out and different families started reaching out about doing virtual visits. So we decided that we were gonna offer virtual visits permanently. And it's been amazing because we've been able to do virtual visits in places that we didn't even imagine. We've done a virtual visit all the way in Venezuela. We've done virtual visits in Japan. Just, it opened so many doors for us. So while it was a negative, we were able to turn it into something that was beneficial. How do you hope and plan to further expand your organization so it can reach like a nationwide and global scale? Um, I think the most important thing is partnerships and relationships um, that we've made along the way. So our goal is just to continue to find people whose hearts are in the right place and who wanna do good work and be able to reach more families. What aspect of Princess Against Cancer journey have you been most proud of so far? So this one's a little cheesy because it's, you know, there's so many things that I'm proud of. Princesses Against Cancer is literally my baby. Um, I love it and I'm proud of everything that it is. But something that I'm really proud of is the people that I've met along the way. I know I've said it a billion times, but I do feel like the team that we have, they're my best friends. The families that I've met, I, I feel so close to, you know, sometimes we still message back and forth. I have some of the families on my personal Facebook. I just feel like we've created this small princess family and I'm just really proud because that's what I wanted from it. I didn't want it to just be a hi, meet princesses, or a goodbye onto the next family or I didn't want it to just be a number. And I'm really proud that we've been able to actually form relationships with these families and create memories and friendships that last. So I think that about wraps up the interview, but is there like anything else you'd wanna say about like, I guess, promoting Princesses Against Cancer? I guess, so if you guys wanna follow us, pretty much all of our social media is just at Princesses Against Cancer. And if you ever want to request a visit, request a care package, or if there's ever any way that we can help you, um, check out our website or any of our social media and we would just love to help. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you guys. This was so fun. And again, you guys are doing amazing things and I am so honored that I was a part of your podcast and I wish you all nothing but the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Uh, so we just wanted to say thank you, Elizabeth, if you're listening, uh, just for joining us again. We were really both inspired by your story. And I just think it's like so inspiring, the fact that she started um, like an entire organization, like, or started funding it, like at age 16, like I'm 16 right now. And thinking about doing that just seems like so overwhelming with school and stuff. So I think it's just so cool how she saw this like thing that she was really passionate about and just went after it. Uh, I totally agree with you. If um, you're watching this, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I was really inspired about how you started the organization at only the age of 16. And um, it's quite inspiring to see how much um, Princess Against Cancer has grown since then. And we can't wait to see what's in store for Princess Against Cancer in the future. So now we're going to be doing our Sunday trivia shout outs. If you want to be included in the shout outs in the next episode, make sure to participate in our trivia. We have it on our Instagram at the Golden Rim Podcast every other Sunday. And if you play to the end and click yes in the poll that asks if you played to the end, uh, you'll get a shout out in our next podcast. So this week's shout outs go to Amalia.D. Three Puentes 482. Abide La Cruz. Alexis um, Dominic underscore. Uh scarlet.lz Lexi Scribilia Natalie underscore Mazaris Daniela Villas underscore If you or someone you know are looking to support childhood cancer patients and help them to experience a better childhood but are stuck on how, Cancer Kids First may be the answer for you. Cancer Kids First is a nonprofit organization started by high schoolers Olivia Zhang that aims to improve the childhoods of cancer patients. Through volunteer work, donations, fundraising, and the creation of this podcast, those working with Cancer Kids First work to further its mission. If you're interested, go to www.cancerkidsfirst.org slash get involved to get involved.
Another way to support the mission of Cancer Kids First is to listen to this podcast and follow us on our Instagram and TikTok at The Goldberg Podcast and Twitter at TGR underscore on air. You can also get in touch with us through our email, thegoldroompodcast at gmail.com. Episodes will be airing two times a month. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Gold Room Podcast. If you have any ideas for or want to be involved with future episodes, make sure to check out the link in our Instagram bio. Have a nice day and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye!